All right, you are welcome again. Let's go. Let's talk about change of scale property. Let's talk about the properties of Laplace transform. And under the properties of Laplace transform, let's take a look at number fourth property. You know, we have treated the first one, linearity property of second the second one, first translation, we have taken the third one, second translation or second shifting property. Now, the fourth one now, we say change of scale property. Please, I want you to go through the different properties we have treated, all right? for easy and better understanding all right now let's go what does this property state or what is it talking about you see when you have a function f of t and then you take the laplace transform of it it gives you let's say we call it f of s then laplace transform of f of a t is going to give you one all over a f of s all over a hello look at this we say if the laplace transform of f of t is f of s all right good then the laplace transform of f of a t is going to give you one all over a f of s all over a this is called change of scale property please stay with me here let's do this together it's very simple all right Let's do it gradually. It's very simple. Pay attention. All right. Now let's go. Proof. You know, based on definition, the Laplace transform of f of a t, what is it going to give you? You know, it's going to give you the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st. The function is what? f of a t dt. All right. Good. Now let's go. Look at this. Look at this. We have the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st f of a t dt you know the ones we have been having is maybe something like f of t right but in this case we have f of a t look at this let's call this a t a letter we can use any letter you can use u you can use anything okay now i decide to call it u okay let a t be called a letter u okay now here we have a t is equal to u let's make t the subject when you make t the subject we are going to say that t is equal to u all over a that is you divide both sides by a right good now in this case now you can differentiate this function with respect to t or with respect to u whichever one is to it will still give you the same thing if you make t the subject in this case let's differentiate with respect to u that means we differentiate t with respect to u is going to give you the t all over the u and when you differentiate u all over a with respect to u it's going to give you one all over a all right good let's cross multiply when you cross multiply we're going to have the t a is equal to the u the t a is equal to the u we are interested in making the t the subject. I hope you know why we are making the t the subject, right? Here, we have f of a t. The variable is t. That's why we say the t, right? Now, we are changing the variable from t to what? To u. That means we are no longer integrating with respect to t because the variable have changed, okay? We are now integrating with respect to the new value, which is u. All right, good. So here we have the T A is equal to the U. We make the T the subject. We're going to have the T is equal to the U all over A. Hello. Hope you get it right. Good. Now let's go. We have gotten a new value for A T, which is U. And then we make T the subject. We say that T is equal to U all over A. And then we make the T the subject. We have the T is equal to the U all over A. Let's substitute for these values. You know, we have the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st f of a t dt, right? Now, substituting, we are going to have the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus s. In place of t, we have u all over a. f of a t. In place of a t, we write u. Now, again, the last one, in place of the T, we write the U all over 
A. Is that clear? Please pay attention. This is the substitution we just substituted now. We substituted for the value of T, for the value of 80, and for the value of DT. Alright? Good. Now, let's go. Where we have E raised to the power of minus S, in brackets, U all over E. Let's open the bracket. When you open the bracket, we are going to have E raised to the power of SU all over E. F of U. And then we factor out 1 all over A in this du all over A. So when you factor it out, we're going to have 1 all over A du. Is that clear? Yes. Now you can see, based on the linearity property, when you have a constant, you take it behind. Is that true? Yes. Now, 1 all over A is a constant. We take it behind the integral sign. When we take it behind, we have the integral from 0 to infinity. Also, look at this e raised to the power of minus su all over a. Let's put u by the side so that we know the parameter we are having there. So when you put u by the side or when you factor out u, what are you going to have? We're going to have minus s all over a in bracket u. Okay? Then we have f of u du. Now look at this. Look at this. Record that. The integral from 0 to infinity, e raised to the power of minus s, t, f of t, dt, is equal to f of s. Hello. Recall that the integral from 0 to infinity, e raised to the power of minus s, t, f of t, dt, is equal to f of s. Is equal to what? f of s. Look at what we have here now. We have the integral from 0 to infinity, e raised to the power of minus s all over a u, f of u du. Comparing these two equations, this one here we have now, the parameter is minus s, Why the variable is t. Okay, so the parameter, that's why we have f of s. Hello, the parameter is s, that's why we have f of s. Now, in what we just solved now, our variable is u, and our parameter is s all over a. That's why we're going to have f of s all over a. Hello? Good. Look at this. We say the integral from 0 to infinity is e raised to the power of minus st, f of t dt, is equal to f of s. Why the s? Because of the parameter, the coefficient of the variable in the exponent of e. The parameter is what? Is s. Okay? Good. Now, what we solved now, our variable is u. What is the coefficient of u in this e? Is having what? s all over a. So, that means in place of s, in what we have here, what we solved, we have s all over a. So, therefore, in the place where we're supposed to have f of s, that means we're going to have s all over a. Is that clear? So, therefore, looking at this, we have, we see that 1 all over a, the integral from 0 to infinity, e raised to the power of minus s all over a, in bracket u, f of u du, is equal to 1 all over a, which is outside the integral, right? Good. And then, by definition, we see that the whole of this now is what? F of S all over A. The parameter is S all over A. Is that clear? Yes. So now, this is called the change of scale property. Please, I want you to watch this all over again for you to get this clearly. It's very simple. All right? Yes. Thank you very much for watching. Please, if you have not subscribed, if you are new to our YouTube channel, please subscribe now like and share our videos stay blessed